Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming. Uh, it's my honor to be able to speak in front of all of you and accept the invitation from the Durham Union. Uh, the opposition tried to depict a picture of why he thinks that we should not boycott the Olympics. He brought out two main points to one. First one will be the effectiveness. But he doesn't really address what it will go wrong if we indeed do the diplomatic boycott. Of course, I think that a diplomatic boycott does not really as effective as we can overturning the whole malpractice in Olympics. But I think that is the least thing that we could do. For now, uh, it's really important as an activist, we must do something, and I will illustrate up to all of you why we should start acting now, even though that is not as effective as it could be. And for the second point, he point out that uh, having a boycott would undermine the spirit of old impacts, and I will show you that actually it's the IOC and China undermines the very spirit of the Olympics and violating the promises and the pledges that they made in order to win that bet. So ladies and gentlemen, I know many of you are like me, we didn't really pay much attention to Winter Olympic. Um, I rather watch track and field and I rather watch something that I myself played with. And maybe Beijing, uh, it is not a city or um, a place that associates with you. Uh, it is really far away. And even though all of you use a main China product every day, you may not be very interested in knowing the politics there. But when these two combine together, I, I think it really shows something that we really have to pay attention to. Um, for me, uh, maybe watching Winter Olympic would be an experience of watching curling, because I, it reminds me of the daily chore that I have to suffer every day uh, by doing myself. Um, but other than that, there are lots of problems ongoing. And for me, I had already decided not to watch it, uh, even though I was not really getting interested in it uh, at first, but I decided not to watch it at all. <laughs> Why? Um, because it's clear that this Olympic is happening in Beijing. It is the capital city of the People's Republic of China. It's 2,000 miles away from Xinjiang region, and it's 1,200 miles above uh, on the north from Hong Kong. And it is the place where the Chinese Communist Party commands the actions of crimes against humanity and genocides. For me, it's really disheartening to point out that, that, that thing, because uh, as we all know, things that are happening as depicted by um, Catherine is really appalling, and if you have time to look for that for yourself, it, it will dishearten you, but it really depicts a clear fact. It is a result of complacency. It is a result that we have not been acting for exactly 14 years. When we talk about Olympic spirits, let's uh, take a look at uh, the criticism from the Human Rights Organization. Um, and hereby I quote, the Olympic Committee is declaring that uh, the game celebrates unity and humanity, but is actually actively whitewashing the human rights violation in China. And, um, Following the quotes, um, the Chinese government and the International Olympic Committee have had seven years to deliver on their pledges that these games would further human rights. Instead, the Beijing games have prompted a rollback in some of the most basic rights enshrined in China's constitution and international law." End quote. And Sophie Richardson, the now China director in Human Rights Watch, <coughs> made this comment in 2008. It was exactly 14 years ago when Beijing hosts the first Olympic, but the command doesn't age. The criticism can still apply, if not have underplayed the dire human rights situation in mainland China. For now, China is responsible for crimes against humanity and genocide, um, also for the Tibetan community. They're facing apartheid like situation. And we have actually designed it far back, 14 years ago. But why there has been any action, and why a new Beijing Olympic is rewarded to mainland China, I think that is the reason why we just have to have a boycott now. We just have to take actions to make the point that they cannot get the second Olympics. They cannot pretend they fulfill all the promises that they have made in 2008 and in 2020. Let us not forget when countries bid to host the Olympics, they must take, make a pledge to uphold Olympics related human rights <coughs> promises. In the IOC committee, um, President Thomas Patch's words, um, he said it in December 2021 regarding the
the Beijing Olympics. Here I quote, we have to live up to our responsibilities related to the games. Not discrimination, freedom of press, open internet, freedom of expression for the athletes, end quote. Sadly, none of these values are being respected by the host. So who is undermining the spirit of Olympics? Those abuses reflect both the Chinese government's wholesale value to honor its Olympic-related human rights promises, as well as the negligence of the IOC in ensuring that China fulfill its commitments. When we look back 14 years ago, the 2008 Olympics built a tremendous brand for China, symbolizing its rise as a superpower and enhancing its global status. We have witnessed how much support an event like that Olympics could bring to a country, and that could be abused in a terrible way, just like China did in the, four, in, in the previous 14 years. Is it offering reputation credits for dictators to compensate for the loss of fame incurred from the atrocities? When we ask ourselves, what countries should be banned from hosting an Olympic, a global event that brings an immense source of pride, a declaration of noble status, an answer, the answer is really, really clear. No country committing crimes against humanity <coughs> and acts of genocide should be permitted to host that. China does not pass this standard. Indeed, as I mentioned, it is really not enough to do like diplomatic work for now, but at least it is a starting point. And as we all know, that it is, there is no way for us to overturn that ongoing Olympics um, and the decision of IOC, which IOC has been clearly seen as colluding with the PRC and providing cover for some of the atrocities like the Pansu incidents. We as audience, as supporters of sports and as spectators of global events, we should at least act. And if we act, we can send a very, very, very clear signal. No genocide games. The US, UK and Canada, alongside with India and some other democratic countries, have already launched a diplomatic boycott and viewership of the opening ceremony of the 2020 um, Beijing Olympics is far lower than the one in 2018 Pinchang Olympics. There were just a handful of uh, country's leaders attending the ceremony with the General Secretary Xi, including Russia's Vladimir Putin. The game is clearly not welcomed by the international community and this should not also be welcomed by the British people and the Durham Union. <coughs> the 2020 vote game in Beijing will forever leave a stain on the Olympic history and those who allowed and supported to happen. Germany's Luge gold medalist Natalie Goensberger, um, really do hope that I pronounce it not terribly wrongly, uh, German name of the athlete, um, who was sharply critical of China prior to the Beijing Olympics. In an interview, she said, she would make comments on China only after leaving the country. Look at what we have put our athletes in that situation. It's terrible that we put our top athletes that they must choose when to speak and to be censored from their own right to speak because they are in a terrible country that persecutes free speech and can in the highest level. We should never let them to make these difficult choices again. And it all starts from the action we take today. And we all should start from learning the mistakes that we made in 14 years ago. Corporations should either withdraw sponsorship or use their leverage to raise human rights concern and uh, to align with the UN guiding principles on business and human rights. Uh, the sponsors now are clearly not abiding to that standard. And we should really stop watching the game, or at least not pretending it is a display of China's global power. And when we talk about these loaded terms, uh, crimes against humanities, imprisonment, apartheid-like environments, for many of you who are sharing a black tie event with me, it may sound distant. But for me, it is a painful yet personal story. I've got friends who are still in jail. I myself was thrown to jail by the Chinese Communist Party. It's really terrible that we have come to a point that we must argue what we can do and whether we can do enough. But as an activist, I can only promise myself 
If there's a tiny bit of things that I can do for my fellows in Hong Kong and in China, indeed, I would do it. I know it is not perfect, but we must act now. So, ladies and gentlemen, I hereby urge you to vote for the motions today. This house would boycott the Beijing Winter Olympic. Thanks so much.